with 80 laps to go. Laney to the lead, Castle the second, Kevin Harvick pushing him. Here's Landon Castle for the lead at Talladega. And he's got it. by two on the both of them. Once again, just a great example that all of these teams that come here are part of this race, can get out front, can lead, and possibly win. Jimmy Johnson finding ways to hold on to the lead here at Talladega Super Speedway in the final 23 laps of the Geico 500. Brad Keselowski trying to find a way around him for the top spot, and Danica Patrick leading a rally in the outside lane there four wide to turn three. up there racing for the lead, the way those fans just jumped to their feet. That's certainly the second biggest roar that we've heard all day. Without question. That side drafting thing. Talk to me about what you're trying to do there as a driver. You're Jimmy Johnson and you're moving over. Yeah, you're moving over to get against that car. What it does is the air there will act put drag on that car and literally try to pull it back. You're hoping that, that what it does then, it su sucks somebody in your rear bumper and you can get a push. Danica played that perfectly though. Tried to get away from it just a little, didn't allow Jimmy to put that full, full force there. Yeah, but I think she used it to get to that position too. She yeah. used it pretty effectively to get to that right side door, even to the 48 to take the lead. I think she's doing a really good job. 21 laps to go. New leader, Danica Patrick. Now watch him go back to the bottom. Okay, yeah, he just goes back to the bottom to block that bottom and pull that inside line up equal to, to the outside. But as soon as, if you saw when he came on the straightaway, he went to the wall, which yeah. actually helped that third lane. That third lane pulled up like two or three cars. I'm not sure you want to help everybody behind you right no. now. I think he's just trying to keep the, uh, everybody behind him side by side. Uh, yeah, he's going to lose that bottom lane if he doesn't be careful. And I don't think you want to lose that bottom lane right now. No. Which brings me to, as a driver in this race, how much you're looking out the front of your car versus using the rearview mirror. Well, he certainly is. Uh, and he's got that spotter giving him a lot of information right now, too, on where he should be. 20 car looks anxious to get to the front, Marty. He's in that outside lane. And certainly Adam anxious to get a win here in 2014. He pushes it to the front around David Gillen for at least a moment. And I was talking to Matt Kenseth before the race. He said... That's really the formula Dale Earnhardt Jr. used to win the Daytona 500. You would see him in the corners. He would run the bottom of the racetrack as Kenseth goes to the lead. Now we see Harvick stuck in the middle. He actually just made a third row in the middle with hopes that McMurray was going to go with him in that one car. Well, what Kevin's got to do is he needs something to happen here for him because he knows he's got the fastest car, but there's nowhere to go, and this is not the way you want to be going now. And everybody else knows it. They stream on by him, except for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Whatever you do, don't get in the middle. I mean, I, we saw that with the 11 car. He had to go all the way to back and regroup, worked his way back up. Tell you what, we better keep a close watch on that 18 car Kyle Busch, because he is a man on a mission. We're riding with him right here as he's cracked the top 10. Yesterday in the Nationwide race, Larry, he 
slammed the wall early in the race. They patched the old car up, and he was going for the win. Spun out on the last lap, going into the third turn, but he'll, go, he'll hang it out. We know that. So far in the outside lane, those Roush Fords have not broken formation. Biffle, Edwards, Reagan. While the inside lane, there's been all kinds of wheeling and dealing. Krista. This is the part of the race Carl Edwards has been thinking about for the last two weeks. Says forget about the chess game. It's a poker game to him. You have to weigh all of the possibilities. You have to think further ahead at this racetrack than any other track in NASCAR. It really did, Kristen. What happens, you got to start thinking about your move on the back straightaway when you're going in the first turn. Where, I, where am I going to be when I come out onto the back? Scott Speed leads this race with a contrary strategy to everybody else in the field. He did not stop when the rest of the leaders came in. But Larry, with 10 or so laps to go, he might have to stop. Yeah, you know, we ran 13 cautions since he basically made his pit stop. So that has bought him another six laps. But that still is just well outside the window of what anybody told me that they could run on fuel. We just had to see. Yeah, I think what they were depending on Larry was some cautions that maybe you know, before the race was over with. Right now, everybody's driving pretty, pretty sanitary, really. They're a little aggressive, but nobody's doing anything dumb yet. All right, the Roush Fenway trio has been broken up. David Reagan in the number six got caught in the middle. Somebody got underneath him, and you see him back about 11th spot. Because of the cooler temperatures, the cars, the handling's not going to go away on these cars like we saw it do earlier in the day. So they're going to stay hooked up a lot better and a lot longer. Carl Edwards gives Greg Biffle a bump to push him ahead of Scott Speed entering three. That's it, passing gear. He just gave him a little passing gear. Well, you could see what it did to the miles per hour. It shot it up about three or four miles per hour. These guys are all over this racetrack, right up next to the wall, right down on the apron. Scott Speed, another open wheel driver, coming to NASCAR after stint, a stint in Formula One. And you wonder why nobody left. And you wonder why pop, people probably at home are still watching. It's because of this action we're seeing right here. Martin and Jeff Hammond, there's uh, Jimmy Johnson, as you see. He comes right back, a little uh, give and take from uh, Jeff Green and Mark Martin. Well, definitely a little bit of give and take right there. I think that's what you're saying right now is that, you know, Mark's a very courteous driver. Jeff Green respects Mark Martin. They've raced against each other for quite a while, especially down in the bush ranks. And I think that's what you're just seeing right now is good sportsmanship because we're still early in this race. you got to realize we've got almost 300 laps to go. We've already had five caution flags, and we're getting ready to come up here you know, since the last pit stop, you can see right now we got uh, 12 minutes and 17 seconds since our last. We got trouble on the racetrack already, so we got another caution. Paul Menard to your round, Mike. Absolutely. You know, we're going to see different drivers do different things, but Jamie feels like they're dropping back and hanging out. This is a long, long race. That gives him the best opportunity to be there when it matters. How about front row Joe up on the outside there coming through three and four? Nima check in the 87, planning to go the distance today. Both of his cars did make the show. Jeff Fuller in the other one, and we told you he fell to the back. No cars went to the rear, and here we go as we get ready to go past lap number one. We're going to have three wide in multiple sections of the track. Yeah, they started out two wide. That didn't last very long. As you can see, three wide all the way back from about a third spot on. That's great to see Joe Nemechek lead that first lap. Look at him out front. Now he's hung out in the middle. Now he goes to the high side. Gonna get a big push. Got Dale Jr. right behind him. Boy, he played that perfectly, too, and that's what we'll have to see all day. That's a chance you take pulling in front of those cars, but, man, you can get a nice push. Here goes Gordon up to that third spot. Jeff Gordon looks like he's come on, too, just about the last two or three laps. He's been running some pretty good laps and closed right in on Kurt Busch in that two car. And now they're actually both catching up on uh, Dave Blaney. Let's get an update on the leader from Matt Yoke. Dave Blaney really hasn't said a whole lot in the radio bill about his car, but it worked once, so Tommy Baldwin thought he would try it again. On the way to New Hampshire, they stopped off at a tiny bullring Connecticut called Thompson Speedway. They had two race cars. They made a lot of 40-lap runs. They dialed in a certain setup, and it has pretty much worked all weekend. They won the pole Friday, hoping to score his first win today. Marty? Well, Jeff Gordon just took over the second spot. Matt, the car, they... There's Todd Bodine, that light blue 66 car, having a good run early. And here comes Blaney. 
And he's doing it in the right place, right in front of this huge crowd at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. New leader. And that's one of the, the lame duck brigade. Drivers that are going someplace else next season, but they're sure not scrimping on their effort here. Where's Jeff Gordon at? 16th the last time by, moved up from his 24 starting position. And Junior loses another spot as Mark Markets on the inside takes a spot away. Like they're racing, he may get a chance because, man, they're banging on each other. Hey, guys, don't look now, but look at this battle for the lead up front. Bubba Wallace wants to lead this thing. He's going for the lead. Look at this. Wow. Bubba, go, baby, that go. That is impressive. And the Richard Petty, number 43, goes to the lead in Bristol. Oh, man, you know the King's got to be jumping up and down. Well, earlier I said he, he made a rookie mistake trying to go three wide underneath Clint Boyer right now. He looks like a veteran out and, there. And you know what I love about Bubba? I guarantee he got a smile on his face <laughs> as big as the hood of that car right now because he has driven aggressively, but he's driven pretty smart. Now's the time he can start singing. Look at Drew. <laughs> right, yeah, look at Drew. He said, that's my boy. That's my boy. Whatever adjustment they made to the 43, it was definitely the right one. He said he needed something to hang on to. He's hanging on to her now. Vince? Well, they tightened that car up the two previous stops before this most recent uh, stop. And Drew Blickensdurfer told Bubba, he said, I know it's free for you, but I think the track is going to continue to tighten up. So it should come to us. And that has certainly been the case. And the exit of turn four, they were having a little issue with it snapping. But that seems to have stabilized as well. And you can see the 43 looks pretty sporty out front. He really does, Vince. And what he's got to do now is be cool. You know, be cool. First I save the night, and that's... The six car, Trevor Bain, he's making some moves. He ain't going to sit here and ride. And McDowell. McDowell moves to the outside of Casey Kane, tries to get that outside line working. And Clint Boyer moves up to block. Down to the bottom of the racetrack goes McDowell, trying to take the lead away. He's got help. Yeah, he's got great help from Trevor Bain. Trevor is going to move around. He's going to try to make something happen. He started all that back in turn one, or entering turn one, all that began. A whole run was organized there. Michael McDowell leading at Daytona. Remember, Mike, Michael McDowell, that car he's driving. Roush Fenway built that car, prepared it. He's got a Roush car behind him. Big block by Trevor Bay. Now he's trying to get the 95 from going underneath him. Could not do it. Casey Kane with a big run. And he blocks the 95. So Michael McDowell stays in front of the momentum. Up to third now, Martin Trex Jr. 41 30s. The yellow car, Dave Blaney, that's the Jasper Ford. Out in front here by two seconds. Over Kurt Busch, Blaney, a former World of Outlaws champion and uh, a racetrack owner, Sharon Speedway in Ohio. Dick Bergman. Jimmy Fennig is Kurt Busch's crew chief. You guys took two tires on that last stop. How is it working? Well, we're loose right now. Uh, hopefully, they'll come in a little later, but. We're going to get four at the end here and see what's going to happen. We might have to tighten up a little bit. But. It's at Talladega. You're sitting back there. You see all these cars bouncing off each other. Are they going to make it? That's what you're not sure of. Are they going to wreck or are they going to make it? That's the indecision. That's the indecisiveness that this place creates. Here comes Allgaier. He wants to lead a lap in this race. Yeah, Darrell had just spoke about him. <laughs> Again, we've got this line there in the top, and I think they've got a good enough group of drivers with their cars that are able to shoot this this group here toward the front. Well, remember, that's a great race. That's a Hendrick-affiliated car. Steve Eddington, the crew chief, and that kid can drive. So that's a good car with a good driver and a smart crew chief. Didn't leave that lap. He was six one-thousandths of a second short. Well, if he can get to the front and uh, Doc, Josh Wise can get around it, Reddit.com will blow up. <laughs> All the digger on the inside. Hamlin on the outside. The final 30 laps coming up from Martinsville. Great start by Armand Digger. Kind of checked everybody up, then got going. By the 24 was going to run on him. Armand Digger did a great job. Can he hang on to that top spot? Denny Hamlin fighting on the outside. Almendinger was able to take the lead on the outside from Denny Hamlin. Will Hamlin try the same move? Martrex Jr. jumps in behind the 24. 
Hamlin not able to get in front of the 47. Now he slides back to second. No, but the fact that Hamlin got to second and not Jeff Gordon is huge for A.J. Allmendinger. Hamlin not as quick coming out of turn or four. And that allowed the 24 of Jeff Gordon to get to the inside. Now he moves up the track. Jeff Gordon's going to take second away from Hamlin. The pressure tires on the 24. Now, right behind the 47 of Almendinger. I believe the 24 with those pressure tires will get to the bumper of the 47, but will he be able to get by? Will he even try to get by and clean, or will he move the 47 right up the track? Talked about Tony Stewart moving up to the high side. He's using the high lane now to go by the five car of Mark Martin for position. He did it right off the start, too. He didn't even try the bottom. Here comes Ambrose now working the top side of Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, he's going to take that lead right now. That's what I thought he would try to do the first time, but I think Jimmy kind of fooled him when he went high into three and opened the bottom the last time. We're going to have a new leader at the line this time. Marcus Ambrose, very deliberate and very, very careful. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> when he passed Jimmy Johnson at Bristol, Tennessee, folks, back in August, he did the same thing. He said, Jimmy who? As he went by. And now Marcus Ambrose, one of the most colorful characters in the garage area, is our leader here at Homestead race from Ty Dillon, Greg Biffle, and Danica Patrick on 40 lap old tires. Let's see how this works out. Well, remember Landon Castle got crashed in qualifying. Don't forget uh, the 14 car. Yeah, the car Ty right Dillon. behind him. Yeah, the Ty Dillon car got into him in qualifying, and there they are running first and second. But this is a great opportunity for us to see, you know, a car that we don't normally see in the front get clean air and, and be up on in the front of this pack and see what he can do. I, I'm excited about watching this, and it's a great opportunity for Landon Castle and that race team. A great strategy move for this Iowa driver and for Ty Dillon, but here comes Carl. Concrete Carl on the move. <laughs> you mean concrete is in racetrack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Just checking. He's been really, really good on this concrete here today at Bristol. I believe Harvick started on the inside on that restart. So yes. we've seen everybody that starts on the inside and unless you're maybe on that front row that really can cost you. Harvick. Here he goes, makes a great move inside the 16. Kevin restarted seventh. He's moved up to fourth. And here is Edwards hunting the lead from Landon Castle. Nice for Bob Jenkins and Front Row Motorsports to lead a few laps here and hang on to the lead. Yeah, he's not going to get it done by just rolling around the bottom. Nope. All right, pressure or slide job? What do you want to do here? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Whichever I, comes first, first if I'm, I can get through him. First I'm going to apply pressure, and yeah. then I'm going to make the slide job. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if the pressure doesn't get to him, let me just slide it in front of him. But I think Carl was sort of searching there going, okay, you know I'm faster. You know I have uh, fresher tires. Are you going to just give this to me? I'll try it the easy way first. Okay, you didn't give it to me the easy way. Now I got to do it the hard way. Yeah, but well, no, this no, is this no. is Landon Ch uh, Castle's big chance. Yeah, right. And I think Carl realizes that. Yep. You know how Carl is. He's and uh, why why push the issue? And this sponsor, Snap Fitness Castle, brought this sponsor to front row. They were with him with another team last year, and he's got it out in the wind for them, holding off the pole sitter. Oh, this is an opportunity of a lifetime for Landon Castle. I think Carl might be able to get up in front of him here down the front straight away. No, not nope. quite. <laughs> you got to love this. I do love it. Now Edwards clears him and goes back into the lead. 